Sure. So the first thing I want to get out of the way is any preconceived notions that people have that meditation has to be done in a special place or at a special time or in special clothing or on a special seat. You don't need any of that. You can meditate anywhere, anytime. All you need is you. Um, you can sit in whatever posture you like. It's often effective to just sit in a chair comfortably with a straight back. Um, and that allows you to be alert and at ease. If it's not comfortable to sit straight back, lean against your chair, lie down. Don't worry. It's not about the posture. It's about what you're doing with your mind. Um, and what you are doing with your mind is focusing your attention on your breath or a neutral thing. Typically, it's your breath. When your mind wanders away from your breath, you notice that your mind has wandered. And then you choose to bring your attention back to your breath. So that's the activity. You're observing your mind and bringing your attention back to one single thing, your breath. Now you can do this any time of day. Some people like to meditate in the morning. Some people fall asleep meditating in the morning. Some people like to meditate in the evening. Some people fall asleep and it's a good thing. So, you know, choose the time that works for you. And in terms of the amount of time in our studies with Muse, we've seen that 10 minutes a day can be very effective. Um, both for improving physiological function, as well as decreasing stress, increasing resilience, et cetera. And we've even seen effectiveness at five minutes a day. In fact, the Mayo Clinic in the United States has been using Muse for many years with its patients. And at the beginning of the pandemic, gave Muse to their doctors and healthcare professionals on the front line. So I'm sure many of you remember just how stressful it, it could was during the pandemic and particularly how stressed the frontline workers were, the healthcare workers. And they were people without a lot of time on their hands. They were given Muse and they used it for on average five minute sessions. So very short sessions. And in doing so, they were able to see a decrease in burnout of an incredible 54%. So like 54% decrease in burnout scores and significant improvements in their quality of life, their stress levels, their resilience, and even their cognitive function. So mm -hmm. you don't need a long meditation, but you do need to do it consistently. So consistency is the key. Five minutes or 10 minutes every day is going to reap you huge benefits in the long run. When you say long run, do we have any idea how long run is, or is it just like incremental? It's incremental. So in using news with people, what I tend to see is the first, after the first week or two, you start to say, hmm, my mind seems a little bit quieter. I am better able to observe my feelings and my thoughts. I'm better able to respond when I feel angry instead of reacting. And, you know, people will notice things happening. They might notice better sleep. Um, by week five or six, you're saying, wow, you know, this has made a huge difference in my life and I want to do it every day because when I do it, I feel better. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at first the motivation is, um, in these, we have lots of gamifications and things that get you to start the practice and stay motivated. And then by week five or six, you're motivated because life is better when you meditate and just like fitness, you know, going to the gym or eating well, it's something that becomes a part of your lifestyle. You know, you don't ask, how long do I need to be brushing my teeth for? It's just a thing you do every morning and your mouth feels much better when you do it. And by the way, you know, you're not getting cavities. And so meditation becomes something that is simply a part of life. So one thing I saw that the, the, the muse will actually give you guided meditations. And there are lots of guided meditations. But the meditation you described was watching your, watching your breath. So is there a difference between the two? I mean, would you use them in different times or, yeah, well, yeah I mean, how would you can compare guided and uh, kind of breathing meditation? Sure. So uh, sometimes guided meditations will guide you in a breathing exercise. Mm -hmm. So the exercise I described is your basic focused attention meditation. Mm -hmm. And then there are many different forms of guided meditations. And those guided meditations often are guiding you to use either your breath as the object of your attention, or it could be a body scan where it's guiding you to focus your attention on different parts of your body. And as your mind wanders away, you bring it back. It may be guiding you to focus on the sounds in the room. And again, once your mind wanders, you bring it back to the here and now. So all of these are different um, 
expressions um, of the same meditation concept, which is you're focusing on one thing that you are choosing to focus on. When your mind wanders away, you notice it and you choose to bring your attention back. And guided meditations can be incredibly helpful because they train you to uh, really train different parts of your physiology, your mind and your body. And they can also contain lots of inspiration. So in Muse, we have guided meditations for getting ready for a big meeting, for uh, dating, for uh, doing well on exams, for performance, for leadership, because the same concept can then be wrapped into all the different things that we do in our life that cause stress, where we need to shift our mental state, where we need to be able to calm our body. And so it's um, guided meditations are extremely helpful. And with Muse, what we do is we allow you, we let you do guided meditations with your headband. So you're getting real time feedback on your mind's activity and your body's activity during the guided meditation. So it's not just somebody talking at you. It's actually an interactive experience where you are hearing what is going on in your body, helping you do it better, giving you even greater insight and efficacy in the meditation practice. A meditation where you're thinking about uh, gratitude or you're thinking about, you know, like the day ahead and it's like trying to have a positive view of the day ahead. W would you consider those as kind of meditations? Because you're, you're thinking, right? But So there, and again, there are different forms of meditation. So in a mantra meditation where you're thinking of a positive word or phrase over and over and over again, mm -hmm. in that case, the mantra, the word or phrase like, I am love, or it's a beautiful day, whatever that phrase is, or mm. um, a blessing. That mantra is the object of your attention. And when your mind wanders away from that mantra and you start thinking about your grocery list or your kids or whatever, then you're no longer meditating. In a gratitude meditation, that's not a focused attention meditation. That's a different form of meditation. So in a gratitude meditation, you're building healthy and positive mind states by choosing to uh, express and think about gratitude in those moments. Mm. So just like when you go to the gym, you know, you could be running, you could be doing weights, um, both very different ways to get at the same thing, which is increased health and fitness. Moving, so talking about the device, we kind of, actually, I think you've touched on some of these already, but um, so what is what is the device tracking? Let yeah. me grab. I probably probably have a muse right behind me. Uh, yeah, please. So this is the muse right here. Mm -hmm. It has sensors on the forehead. So these gold sensors back there are EEG sensors and sensors behind the ears here. Mm -hmm. And it slips on just like this little band on your forehead. The sensors are making contact and it's picking up the, my brain waves. So when right now it's not on, but when I focus, it's picking up the brainwave activity associated with it. And when my mind wanders, it can tell that my brainwave activity has changed to mind wandering. So it's very particular in what it does. It's just looking at that specific change in state from focus to mind wandering. It then sends that data to my phone and I'm able to then hear what my brain is doing. So when I'm focused on my breath, I hear it as quiet, soft sounds. When my mind wanders onto a thought, onto the grocery list, onto why I'm doing this, then I hear it as the sound of the rain pickup. So I hear rain when my mind is wandering, that becomes my cue to say, oh, right, my mind's wandering back to my breath. And then the rain quiets down. And then little birds start chirping to reinforce my brain. It's neurofeedback, reinforcing your brain that, yep, you're doing it right. This is the right state. You're doing it right. And your mind wanders away onto thought. Rain picks up. Oh, I'm thinking, come back. And so this is incredibly effective because most of us, while we're meditating, our mind wanders and we don't realize it. You mm -hmm. know, the goal of meditation is to train your metacognition, your ability to observe when your mind wanders, but most of us just end up mind wandering and then following that thought. And then, you know, one, three, five minutes later, you're like, oh, right, I'm supposed to be meditating, mm -hmm. bring it back. And so with Muse, you know, instantly, you know, within a second, oh, that was a mind wander, bring it back. And you're able to very sensitively begin to understand how to observe your mind more effectively, to be able to build that metacognition. 
And if the mind wander and then bring your attention back, that's kind of like the bench press rep at the gym. That's like the, the work, the exercise of meditation. And so with Muse, you're able to get in more of those reps um, than you would be without Muse. So it's really showing you what you're doing, or telling you when your mind's gone off track, and then guiding you and cheering you on when your mind's back on track. So it really, really makes the process of meditation so much easier. Does it give you a score? And does setting goals work for for meditation? Can can you set yourself a goal? I, I'm going. I want to be better at meditating. Yeah. So it's kind of ironic that you know, for some meditation is a, a goalless, stateless experience. Um, in this case, we have used our kind of basic human motivational architecture that we like scores and goals to get you to start the practice. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, the score is not the end game. Ultimately, you're not doing it for the score, but the score is something sticky that just helps you do it. The same reason that we love scrolling, you know, doing all those human behaviors that we love that aren't necessarily that good for us, mm -hmm. scrolling on our phone or playing video games. Um, we've now applied that to think something that really is good for us. So it gives you a score and then you're able to see over time how your progress has improved. And so not only do you get a score, you actually also get your brainwave data. So you're able to see what your brain is doing over the course of your meditation. And then you can see over time how that really is improving. And we have people who've used the device, you know, every day for the last year, and they'll be very excited because they have streaks. And they're like, look, I meditated for 365 days. And they meditate the next day because they don't want to break their streak. <laughs> they <laughs> meditate the day after that. And then all of a sudden you have a really solid meditation practice. So this, this idea of, uh, uh, hacking your way into meditating really works. Mm, excellent. Has there been any validation of the device, like in comparison to perhaps a like a clinical ECG? Yeah. So there's been over 200 research studies uh, done with Muse. Mm -hmm. So there have been a number of them validating Muse compared to a clinical grade EEG, and it really is clinical grade signal. Uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Olaf Krieg Olson out of UBC has done a number of uh, validation studies for us. We also built a sleep tool, Muse S, and Dr. Um, Ravi Yard at University of Ottawa is uh, undertaking that, comparing it to an actual polysomnography system so that Muse detects sleep as effectively as a sleep lab. Um, mm -hmm. And then there are lots of other researchers who have used Muse as a meditation tool and demonstrating that its meditation is very effective and creates long lasting change, um, not only in one's thoughts, feelings, and habits, but also in your brain structure. So researchers from the Catholic University of Milan, um, they used Muse and they demonstrated that uh, they were actually able to not only see improvements in stress and uh, fatigue, you know, the standard things that we see, but they also say persistent change in brain wave activity that demonstrated that these students were more focused and calm throughout the day compared to people who are doing a meditation practice without ease. Can you use the device for just mindfulness during the day? I mean, I have my meditation practice, but I, you know, I wanted to check, you know, am I being mindful? Am I being calm during the day? So could you wear it? more often? You can. It's really built as a tool that you train with. Mm. Um, and then throughout the day, your job is to notice your own mindfulness, you know, like going to mm. the gym, you do your work at the gym, and then throughout the day, you're stronger. Um, right. You, We do have a lot of people who use it for um, brain hacking experiments, um, biohacking. So there's a separate app called Mind Monitor. And Mind Monitor allows you to get the raw brain waves. So you could see your levels of alpha, beta, theta, delta, gamma, um, and also some of the other sensors that are on the device. There's an accelerometer and a gyroscope. And there are actually quite a robust community of people who chat in our Muse community about uh, the insights that they've had drinking coffee, playing the piano, um, you know, be getting into flow state using Muse to track these different states. I was going to ask about flow. Could you 
could you tell if you're in flow from the muse or you'd need this special app so you need mind monitor to do any of the brainwave experimentation that yeah. i described and that's available in the iphone and android store right um Flow state looks different, but meditation is a great way to initiate flow state. So mm -hmm. flow is, a, for those of you listening who don't know, flow is a state that is a particularly special or golden state. It's one in which you are working at something, you're working right at the edge of your capability. So you're very engaged, but it's not too hard so that you can keep going. And it leads to the sensation of you know time disappearing. Um, it's a very creative state and a very focused state that can often feel quite effortless and beautiful. And to get into flow, now flow and meditation are different. The EG of flow and meditation are different. There's some characteristics of it that are different. But in order to get into flow, there's two aspects to the process. One is a focus and calming and quieting of the mind. So doing a meditation prior to getting into flow is fantastic because it starts to begin to bring you into that flow state. The other aspect of flow that's different than meditation is flow is a state of generation. You're doing things, you're creating something, you're being with it. Um, the being with it is the, mm -hmm. is the meditation side, but the you know active creative doing is the flow side. And so you often want to load yourself with a bit of cre creative process or load yourself with creative ideas to get yourself into that flow. So it's a combination of the creativity plus the focused attention. Does the Muse measure HRV? I think it does. Um, yeah, so uh, there are two versions of Muse, Muse 2, which is this one, and Muse S, which is the sleep one. Um, and both of them measure your heart rate. There's a little heart rate sensor there. It's called a PPG, um, photoplasmiograph. And that measures your heart rate. So, in the Muse experience, we have heart meditations where you actually hear the sound of your heart like the beating of a drum. Mm -hmm. So you're not just watching something on your wrist, you're actually literally hearing your heartbeat. And that tunes something called your interoception, your ability mm -hmm. to sensitively understand your internal states. Um, and then when you look at your data, so you're hearing it in real time. And when you look at your data after the fact, you actually see your heart rate going up and down, up and down. Now, most people don't know this, but HRV, heart rate variability, is the difference between your highest heart rate on your in-breath and your lowest heart rate on your out-breath. Because our heart, believe it or not, actually changes its rhythm with every breath. Totally crazy. It's called your sinus sinusoidal arrhythmia. Um, and as you breathe in, your heart rate increases, increases, increases. As you breathe out, your heart rate decreases, decreases, decreases. In increase, out decrease. And the uh, difference, so maybe on your increase in your in breath at the top, you're at, let's call it 70 BPM. And on your out breath at the bottom, you're at 64 BPM. So that difference that of six BPM is your heart rate variability. And the greater the variability between your heart rate at your top and your heart rate at your bottom indicates health. So with the Muse, you can actually try different breathing patterns and you can see ones that make your heart rate really invariable. It's just like a little squiggly line and a deep breathing focused attention practice, which makes your heart rate go like this, you know, big changes between your in-breath and your out-breath. So we don't give you a number. Um, we instead actually let you hear and see the patterns of your heart and understand the impact of specific things that you do on your heart rate variability.